That's Station 95.7. It's Chris Edge, and we've got Woody Platt from the Steep Canyon Rangers. Thanks for carving out the time. I appreciate it. New album out, Arm in Arm. New single, Every River. Sounds amazing on that station. Congratulations. Thank you. We're, you know, it's it's an interesting time to release new music, and uh, we're, we're glad we had a record in the can, and we're excited to share it with the world. Yeah, it's got to be kind of a weird thing to have that project ready to go, but you're not, you know, you're not touring in support of it. Yeah, there's there's the biggest component to anything that we do is, is playing live shows you know that's how we spread the word of the band the music and sell the music and so um yeah it's a challenging time to, right. to release a record am i correct you were on tour when the uh pandemic shut things down you were out of the country we were yeah we were just had just finished a show with steve martin and martin short in dublin wow and we were celebrating pretty hardcore after the show all excited and happy and and in the spirit of the country just having a great time and yeah. then um uh, Lights out. We got a call saying we might not be able to travel back into the States if we didn't leave right away. So we, wow. we scrambled and got out of there. You've got kids? Yeah, I have a four-year-old son and I'm married. So I, the idea of being stuck in Europe was not uh, something I wanted to do. Well, tell me about no. the beginnings of the of the band. How did you guys get together? The Rangers started in Chapel Hill. We were in school in Chapel Hill. Um, we all we finished school in 2000 um, and we started the band our senior year. Um, the original bass player and the banjo player and myself um, were friends our entire college career. Oh, cool. And just sort of out of friendship, this music thing was born. I knew the guys before they owned their instruments and before they were focused on it. And so that's why we're still together. You know, this thing yeah. was born out of friendship. What were you planning on doing before the, the group got together? <laughs> what was the path? Uh, that's a good question. You know, that's a really good question. Everybody was everybody was focusing on their uh, particular degrees, but yeah. I don't think that we had ever we had really formulated what the plan was. So it's a good thing the music came along. Was there a time when you realized, oh, we can actually make a living and a career out of playing music together? Yeah, there there was a time. You know, I guess part of our the lucky part of our band was that we started and we were able to tour when we were young. Yeah. And when it wasn't really um, it wasn't really about making the money, we didn't have a lot of needs. You right. know, we didn't we barely had insurance bills. You know, we didn't have mortgages or car payments or or children or wives. And um, so it, we were able to consider it a full time gig. Right. Even though it was pretty lean and timing is everything. And, and as you know, in all types of careers and for us, we were able to cut our teeth when. When it, when it when the money wasn't there, we were still just living on the love of the music and traveling and all right. that stuff. Can you talk a little bit about the writing process? A disclaimer on the, on the front end of that is I'm not the pr predominant songwriter in the band. Um, I've written, have written some songs that we've recorded throughout our career. Right. Um, but our, our main songwriter is Graham Sharp, our banjo player, and he was a comparative literature major in Chapel Hill. Mm. And, and boy, that worked out. Um, <laughs> but he's uh, he's got this head about him about writing. But where I have felt like my role in that has been over the years, I've sang most of the lead vocals in the band. Right. For, and so to sit down with a songwriter and try to capture what they're writing without asking too many questions, because lyrics mean one thing to me and they mean something different to you. Right. And it, that's the beauty of, of a song is like a song can take two people to two different places as long as it takes you somewhere. So I never ask, unless it's very obvious, I never say, hey, what's this about? I just kind of get it in my own head about how it strikes me. But trying to hmm. deliver a song written by somebody else and honor that, but at the same time, make it your own and be yeah. able to deliver it in your own style. And our process with the band has been very democratic. A songwriter brings a song to the table. And then everybody weighs in on it. Yeah. And that's a slow process because you want to hear everybody's ideas, whether it, it's a chord change or a melody or a time signature or a lyric. You want to hear all those ideas to get the best final result. Right. And so we, we work slow and methodically through material. And our songwriters are very humble in letting that process be organic and natural and, and not being sort of a dictator songwriter. One of the things that we're doing right now at that station is is raising money for the local venues that are here in and around Raleigh, Local 506, Cat's Cradle, um, Lincoln Theater. A lot of these places are running out of time. So wow. you know, we're doing this thing called Save That Stage, raising money for the clubs that are here specifically. 
And I, I wonder if just for a second you could just speak for a moment about the beginning for you and having the opportunity to play on those smaller stages. Yeah, you know, those venues, those four venues you just mentioned, I have incredible memories of each one of those venues yeah. and their stages. And uh, some of the greatest nights I, I can still remember on stage are at the Lincoln Theater and the Poor House and the Cat's Cradle. Yeah. Um, and I, without those stages, you would, I mean, those, and those, a lot of the two of those venues in particular get national touring acts all the time. Sure. So they're not, they're not just um, for fledgling acts. Those are legitimate uh, rock and roll clubs that have national reputation. Right. And so, so like for the cradle, for example, our big break was an opening slot there when we were in college to open, open for another act. And I remember how big of a deal that was when Derek Powers and Frank Heath wrote me an email about the Rangers coming to the cradle. Um, and so I do think that without these rock and roll clubs and these, these bars that are, that are really promoting music mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. The small, the small clubs, you wouldn't have the robust scene in North Carolina that you have right. and you, and you wouldn't have these, touring acts coming through all the time right and it's 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 tight it's a hard way to go and um but i think of those venues as institutions in our state and and by and, and incredibly important to the music scene Do you remember the first time on that stage when you were at the cradle that first show yeah i remember like it was <laughs> yesterday because when I, when I was a freshman i would go watch the shows there yeah and then when i was a senior we we're playing on the stage and i'm i'm gonna forget i forget um what time of year it was, but all I remember is that every one of our friends came to that show because they knew how big of a deal it was right. for our band. Right. So as the opening band, we had this massive amount of support. And then we started doing an annual last day of classes celebration there. Even when we weren't in college, we knew when classes were over because we had been in college and we would make sure we were playing at the cradle so everybody could come nice. cut loose. Well, I really appreciate the time. And uh, thanks very much, and congrats on the new album, the new single, and good luck with what's next. Hopefully you're out of the house soon. <laughs> well, thank you, and thank you guys for playing our new record. We're incredibly grateful. Woody Platt from the Steep Canyon Rangers on that station 95.7, and if you are motivated now to make a donation to save that stage, you can get all the details at thatstation.net.